Ingram Smith, Bud Elliott, back with another episode of the Nolcast. Bud, we are here. <laughs> Almost feel like we have to timestamp this pod, as this will be a interesting conversation that we have tonight. But uh, it's eight fifty on a Monday evening, the sixth of December. Got all kinds of stuff to talk about. A lot of recruiting to go over. Uh, we'll have a lot of discussion surrounding Florida State search for an athletic director and the kind of twists and turns that that have taken. But uh, doing this as a live YouTube recording as well, so it's always fun to do that. And uh, with that, bud, we'll thank our friends at Louisiana Hot Sauce and the great people at Tarpon Cellars Wine and jump straight into this podcast. Yes, a literal tip of the hat to them. We got a lot to cover tonight, man. Uh, I'm on Baby Watch, so could be you know, dad second time at really at any moment. Um, so we will see. We have basically like two shows worth of info, I think, tonight to discuss. And we're going to pack it into one about maybe 75 minutes show. I welcome people in the chat there. Where's Post Miami Ingram? Uh, volume check. This was playing weird with us on the uh, on the YouTube recording a couple a couple episodes ago. So uh, it seems like people are uh, are being cool. Taking a break from soccer for the Noel cast. Absolutely shout out to the Seminoles. They're trying to win uh, a national title there in soccer. Admit, I don't have it on. I am over in the corner here. Uh, not when I'm looking like this. This is a screen. That's my TV over there. Uh, when I look up there, that's at the 60 mile an hour wind uh, going on in this Monday night game, which is pretty wild. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, and get on this. Yeah, I think there was an auto adjust setting that was was causing some issues. We, we would adjust it, and then in post the uh, the video recording uh, mix was all jacked. So, so yeah, let's do just give a quick uh, <laughs> audio check on my end as well, since that seems to be where the the mystery problems have occurred from. But uh, a lot of different uh, things going on tonight. I do have an eye on the soccer game, and uh, you know, wishing the uh, the number one seed. All the luck in the world, and hoping they bring home the uh, the hardware out there. No doubt, man. Let's 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 see some chalk. A uh, lot of stuff going on. Where do you want to start tonight? Everybody says you sound great, so and you do. You got those those dulcet tones of Ingram. Um, I'm not post game Miami, but I do have a do have a cocktail here, so I'm sure that's probably what it is. Nice. All right. Uh, Wesley Besaint probably need to start there. Yeah, there's, there's a couple things here that we just need to kind of get out of the way, I guess. All right, bud. Yeah. Four-star just... kid, Miami Central. You put your eggs in that basket. Things appeared to be coming together. Mom doesn't want him to go out of state, so West Virginia and Penn State, you know, threats but not serious ones. Was going to take a visit to Florida. Didn't because of their, you know, coaching situation. Obviously, they, they fired. You got a lame duck coach at Miami as of the time of the decision he makes multiple visit multiple visits to you in Tallahassee uh, staff felt good about him I can confirm that multiple times I checked in yeah we feel like we're in a good spot we feel like we're in a good spot here they knew he was a Miami fan but ultimately if you're going to get back not to like national championship level but if you're going to get back to like respectability you need to be able to close out a kid like that. And that's an embarrassing miss for this staff. And I, I think it should come with consequences, to be quite frank, uh, and may already have. Yeah, it is an embarrassing miss. And, and I don't need you to to vouch for me, per se, bud. But, I mean, you can certainly say that it's one of the more frustrating stories that I've heard recently as far as the response to it. And, look, there are things in the world of recruiting. <clears throat> okay. So there's only you only win in recruiting. There's no second or third place, and we'll have to see what the uh, the portal does and how it's it's impact. But you know, you either you either get a kid's signature, or you don't. There are times in recruiting where you can put your best foot forward. You can do everything in the world possible. You can just not be able to break a relationship that Coach X Y Z has with mom or whatever decision maker, and that's not <clears throat> an acceptable loss. But it's somewhat understandable. Ask Georgia in their pursuit of Travis Hunter this year. There's also times, and and to be fair, I know Willie's staff ran into this, um, that they'd come back to a staff meeting and say, look, Coach, uh, what we think we have to do to get a high-profile linebacker, high-profile safety, well, there's another school out there that's doing that with a three-multiple on it. We're just not going to sign that kid, okay? Also, Somewhat of an acceptable understanding as to circle of events that leads you more to more effort. You're saying, 
Yeah. Excuse me? More uh, more effort, you're saying, right? Yes. Yeah. More effort would be required. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's one of the, that this is one of these situations. I mean, I, I think Florida State really dropped the ball, and, I, and I'm disappointed in the manner that the Besaint recruiting was handled from the way that I understand things. Um, you pushed all your eggs into the basket at the position, as you mentioned, had the kid up all the time, and you didn't have your finger on the pulse of the recruitment for whatever reason. And didn't you hire oh, somebody? Miami, right. Like, if Miami wait, came in late, from then Miami they Central? came in late. That's what happens in recruiting. You need to have a relationship there that, let's just say that call comes in on Friday, 8 o'clock at night, somebody in that room steps out and lets you know that the map just changed. And I don't know that Marv lost his job because of that or that he was fired, but I don't think those two things are not connected. And I'm not looking to go around being the Grim Reaper people here, but you have an analyst on staff that's almost exclusively there to recruit South Florida and to give you the opportunity to win battles like this. And if you lose it because you don't know what's going on, then you've got to take a good hard look at what you're doing and who you're trying to do it with. From that high school. Right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, if, if I'm Norvell, I'm making a change there. Like, I I, I, I can go get somebody who's, who's you know, wor- working more in college to if I need somebody to break down film analyst-wise. Like, if I bring you on from that high school and you get caught flat-footed on something like that, gone. You, you, you got to be cutthroat. The, we'll, we'll talk about this later in the show, but the other, th- other schools here in the state are upgrading their staffs. They are committing – to being cutthroat. And we'll talk about this a little more later in the show. Um, you got a lot of guys with South Florida ties here, and you get caught flat-footed, right? I mean, you got Bartow, you got Sabbath Joseph, you got Randy Shannon. I don't think that this is – I don't think they did their jobs here, right? I mean, that, that's not good to have that happen, to, to feel good about this up until that late and then get caught flat-footed. That's not okay. If I'm Mike Norvell, I'm pissed. And I yep. think he probably was at that recruiting I, breakfast. My understanding is that that's exactly the response. Yeah, that's right. I mean, what you texted me, yeah. This was not, you know, look, this is... At that position, when you push everything out there for a kid and you get caught off guard, inacceptable. They already unacceptable, think the kid they signed me. last year from the COVID class probably can't play, or at least yeah. won't play anytime soon. Yeah, I have concerns about him. You've messed around with this kid from Lee County. I know I'm not trying to just come out here guns blazing, but I I don't understand if you're really circling back to him again. I've you've made twice the decision that that's maybe not a pairing that you want. Okay, and I understand you've got to fill a board and you've got to get high school linebackers, but do we really want to play the Willis dance in the air of the transfer portal with a kid who's seemingly intoxicated by the idea of playing a position that he's just not. I, I just That's a great point though. You've right? got to do I mean, better at linebacker. It's it's it is uh it's a big, big swing and a mess. Do, this is the issue with the transfer portal. It used to be you recruit a kid like Willis who f- falls in love with the idea that he's a safety, which is what Georgia Tech's pitch was to him, even though he I think FSU weighed him in at two thirty five or two thirty eight, something like that over the summer. I mean the guy's the, the, that guy will never play safety in any sort of traditional sense in college. It used to be if, you, if pre-portal, you had time to de-recruit a kid because he probably wasn't going to bounce because you would lose a year of eligibility. Now you, you got to be a little more upfront with kids unless you seriously plan to follow through with playing that guy at safety, um, which clearly he can't play safety in this defense. What What happens to a kid like that who really enjoys the recruiting process if he gets some hard coaching? Does he does he bounce or can you trust him? Jamie Robinson turned out well for you, but I don't know, man. Uh, I, I mentioned Jamie because he's from the same high school, but he was already in college and had gone through the recruiting process before. That's not a great backup plan. And I, I think this staff has done a lot of good things. And I think you have some good people on this staff. I also think you have some people who Mike Norvell needs to take a look at and say, hey, I didn't put together the perfect possible staff in my first go at it. And I don't think anybody would expect Mike to, right? But it is on you if you fail to make changes on it, personally. So we'll see going forward. Uh, do you, would you take Willis? No. 
I would. I mean, say, look, you, I, I would you've you made the decision before. twice that you want to go in a different direction. Trust your gut there, okay? And he left I mean, you. He kind of embarrassed you twice. Yeah, he did. And again, you displayed that you didn't have a real read of a kid's commitment or, or recruitment twice. So at yeah, the same position, which let's go back to the one of the first episodes we did. We had a lot of good things to say about Marv, but my Mississippi State guy, and I said this on the show, and we got shit for it. I said, my Mississippi State guy said he's got to learn to close. I don't trust him to close out a recruit. Sample set's too small to say my guy was right. So far, it looks like he was right. I mean, that's recruiting is such a small sample set anyway, but... A lot of, lot of supportive evidence to what he's suggested. I mean, we got playing there. time. It's Florida State. And you can't and you can't do any better than I mean Omar Graham's having a nice season. If he's like the third best linebacker in your class, you're pretty happy. If he's the second best linebacker in your class, all right, fine, whatever. If you end up with Omar Graham, well, I mean, granted, there, there's I'm not saying Marv was fired. I think he likely, you know, it's good that, that he lo- looks like he took another spot. And we knew that because, well, I was told to look at some photos, and uh, uh, Randy Shannon was in the picture with Azaria Thomas, the uh, four-star number four uh, number four athlete recruit in the country out of Niceville, who, man, all kinds of connections. To what we were just talking about. He's not not a linebacker. He's more of a safety slash corner type prospect. Really good athlete. Somebody who I think would play early for you. And you're back in the picture there because Oklahoma is kind of far away and Oklahoma fired their coach and LSU fired their coach and Florida fired their coach. And then he really loved Florida's DB coach, but they let him go today. And uh, Azaria tweeted a, a tear a tear emoji. And so you had a really good in-home visit with him. FSU was battling an issue where they didn't recruit his brother under Jimbo. And he went to Georgia Tech and I think that was kind of a hold up in this recruitment seriously now and then i think they find a way found a way to patch that over uh i'm actually told he's going to take an official visit to fsu this weekend so hmm. that's okay. uh, that's some good news for Knowles guys there uh and i mean all of a sudden you go from not a ton of a relationship to maybe one of the longer ones but let's talk about shannon here uh shannon is an authorized coach now on the recruiting trail which means at least for now He's on the staff um, out recruiting. I told you guys at the time that I thought the $40,000 flyer on Randy Shannon as an analyst because uh, UCF was still paying him was great because of his relationship with Earl Little and family, right? Um, If Bama for some reason fills up on Little or fills up on space and they don't have space for Little, which right now the Bama people tell uh, you know, tell me that they do have space. If they didn't have space, you know, uh, I think having Randy Shannon on staff is a hell of a, an insurance policy to, to to make second place come in first place. Is Randy Shannon who needs to be your linebackers coach, though, man? I was not impressed with his recruiting at Florida. I was not impressed with his recruiting at UCF, nor, nor the defense there. I do know some of the players on the current team like him quite a bit. Uh, and Brendan Sinone's reported that as well. He's good at relationships. He has he's good at relationships. He's very questionable at evaluations. I yeah, mean that that agreed. is the the card Some that of those you Florida get on the offers that went out were horrendous. But also think about who was at Florida with him. It's it's the the guy who's running the FSU's recruiting. The guy who I said I didn't think was a good hire when they made it here. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, really? That's that's who you got? It's weird. Like I really think some of these guys on his staff are absolute killers on the trail. And I think they're kind of they, they, they kind of got some anchors around them at, at some other spots on this staff. And um, look, maybe Randy can be a, a solid, uh, um, you know, solid position coach. But I, I don't know, man. Um, not totally sold on that. If, if that's who you're going into South Florida with, you know, it, yeah. it, Joseph, Shannon. Bartow, like, I feel like you're coming in second a whole lot for a lot of these Bartow kids this year. Now, it's part of your reason because you did lose your first four games, and all the comment section over here scrolling is going to tell me it didn't matter. It does. You worked your ass off to kind of replace some of those relationships. But 
you still had to totally rebuild them because a lot of people wrote you off. A lot of kids didn't watch FSU turn, you know, 0 and 4 into 1 and 4 or into 2 and 4. They already kind of wrote it off. That 0 and 4 start did hurt you. So you know, I'm not putting that on Barto, but like, I think you need some, I think you need to take a, look, a good hard look at that, who some of these guys are in your recruiting staff, man. All right, so they're off to a pleasant conversation. So and we far. are we 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 got we got to unload the clip tonight because uh, I got stuff to do. I think uh, whether it be the Thomas kid or whatever else, I do think from a positive standpoint, like Florida State will benefit from some of the whirlwind that has existed in Florida State or in the the world of college football over the last ten days. You have a little bit of stability to sell overall, decent direction in the program. I think you're going to pick up one or two pretty significant kids, uh, like top 300 players in the country, one of them significantly higher uh, because of that. So, you know, it's always interesting when it comes to recruiting, but I do think you'll get one or two kids that even as recently as 10 days ago, you and I would have had a hard time really predicting that Florida State would would be there and be an option for them. So uh, something, to, something to watch and, uh, you know, it ain't all doom and gloom, but it's also – a real situation that needs to be addressed. Yeah, I I, I agree with that for sure. Um, getting Zaria Thomas in is is huge. They do have like, despite all that stuff I just said, right? That's more like you need to stay competitive into the future and need to make the, the necessary changes there. I think to stay competitive into the future. Um, I mean, I, I I know I think you probably are calling for more heads than I am. But I think we both agree you need to mix that thing up a little bit. But like you're going to land some kids out of this whole thing, I think that maybe maybe could fall to you. Thomas obviously being one, no doubt, right? Like like he's he's a stud, and I I might put in a crystal ball for him. You know, I, at Look, this man, point, you, yeah, you sign a class of Thomas McCall Hunter and oh my God. flirt with Little. I mean, you you have. That is a transformational class for your defense and obviously the back half of it. Um, so it would be a Thomas would be a massive, massive pickup. And I'm not just speaking of stars. Like it's a pretty good fit. Uh, I, I like a lot there. His, his brother at Georgia Tech ended up being a Wanye, I believe was how you pronounce his yeah. name. Was pretty damn good player in his own right. So that's an interesting backstory that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. Uh, I think, was that all Jimbo or is that the transition year Jimbo to Willie? Uh, I th- I think that's all Jimbo, if I remember when Thomas's career was exactly. I remember when the Wanya thing was. Um, this is a live broadcast, so we will. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, no, no, that would have been a transition class because he was playing for Tech as recently as last year. Had a remarkable game against Miami, if I remember correctly. Uh, Got it. So yeah, so he was class of 2018, but obviously that was that was the transition class. So. It was basically two weeks of Willie and, uh, you know, uh, 50 weeks of, of, of Jimbo's staff there. Uh, let me see here. Um, where do you want to go? You want to go to the legendary team? Yeah, let's do. We got a couple questions from the, the legendary okay, yeah. team here uh, that I can see out of my peripheral. So I'll certainly let you speak about your experience, but uh, just amazed. I guess now it's target 300 at this point and we'll have our own little thermopylae party or something like that but uh <laughs> we got to set a new goal hit it and uh one of these times i'm actually gonna ding chad up for a, a pretty nice dinner but uh, we'll keep plugging away and just remarkable the experience that we've had with them and and more importantly there are our listeners have had with them going to vegas uh, so i've done my home loan and my refi through these guys i, I you call it four four fsu loan you call the legendary team. You call Shannon and Chad. It's just first class customer service, right? Knowledge of the market, great rates. They take their time with you, walk through the process. Like getting a home loan is not fun. Getting the getting the home is fun, assuming you get the one you want. Which if you don't, I mean, well, I guess in this market, right? That <laughs> you, you got to move pretty quick. Uh, but those guys just first class service, and I mean, it's not just me. Twice, like you said. 250 NOLCAS listeners have decided to make the legendary decision at 844 FSU loan. I, and they, best I know, they've all been happy. We, we, we get a ton of emails about it and we're really, really proud to have them 
as a sponsor of the show. You want to go Mario? Where do you want to go with this? I, I yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm just trying to think about the future here, and I I think Norvell has some absolute home run hires on on the first staff that he put together, but I do think you need to make some changes on it, and I wonder uh, I wonder if what's happened down in Coral Gables will be an impetus for that potentially. It's it's hard not to think that it you know really <clears throat> shines a pretty bright light on what you need to do. Uh, and now to be fair, you know, let's, let's realize how much money Florida state is paying to the position of head coach at uh, football right now. When you talk about Willie's contract and look, that was a, that wasn't as, as flashy as uh, what transpired down in South Gables today or uh, Coral Gables, South Florida today, but that was a significant commitment to, Hey, this isn't going well. We've got to take a really large financial loss to try to, Course correct, and it looks like they did. Um, but if Miami's doing a tenth of the stuff that they're talking about right now, then you've got a whole different animal than you've had down in South Florida. Uh, you've got a level of commitment that has not existed otherwise. Now, you can rightfully point out that this is a school that certainly looks like they're pushing a lot of chips into the middle, and if it doesn't work out, then you know, is it a significant gamble? Yes, but I mean, does it really matter if if they're making the type of commitment that's necessary to buy out one coach for eight million, get another coach, you know, pay him eight and what, pay Oregon nine or whatever his buyout was? That's not any kind of demonst- you know, level of commitment that Miami's ever demonstrated previously. Obviously, you go to Clemson and you get. Radakovich, who I think is one of the better athletic directors in the country. Um, yeah, they're doing some things. And, I tip my hat to him. I agree. Like that, I also get, give a lot of credit to David Lake of our Miami twenty four seven sports site inside the U. Uh, he knew he had the nuts hand, and he just sat on it, man, and just let let everybody else out there look like a fool, uh, you know, running reports that Miami was going to keep Manny Diaz and stuff. Uh, I tell you, w- w- one of the reasons why I put the ball, the crystal ball, in for Saint is that. Coaches I knew on the Miami staff thought they were getting fired after the Duke game. They were just a little bit late on that. Um, Cristobal has some friends, and I think one is actually by marriage, who are like B with a you know, billion with a B billionaires. And they have decided that they want to bring him home and bring Miami football back to glory. And that's not something that they've really been since you and I have been podcasting. Uh, really, or potentially ever, as, as far as the funding. And my thought is this, right? Cristobal is very much a resource hound. He's not going to take that job if he doesn't think they're going to they're going to give him all the support in the world for you know, finances and paying quality people. We talked about this, I think, three episodes ago or four about like you can't pay somebody sixty if they have a family and expect them to enjoy life in the Gables. Because they're going to have to live 90 minutes away if you want to have enough space to have a family. If you got a you know single 23 year old guy or something like that, he can go get one of those kind of college apartment stuff, you know. But like it's hard to get quality people unless you can pay them a lot of money if you're in a very expensive city like Miami or, for instance, like USC. I, I talked about this on, on Cover Three. Um, they seem to be all in, and Mario Cristobal in game coaching has been kind of suspect so far. He has won two Pac-12 titles, or excuse me, uh, Pac-12 North titles, two of the weaker uh, years, I would say, in that league, especially with USC being as down as they are uh, and have been, and, and with uh, with Peterson leaving Washington and having Jimmy Lake take over. Uh, but, you know, they still want him. I think some of the in-game coaching stuff has been suspect. But the guy is one of the absolute most dynamite recruiters in the sport of college football. And... He's from Miami. You put him down there. I think he's going to absolutely kill it in recruiting. Whether he turns that into something, we'll see. Uh, but FSU has to step its game up institutionally as well. Uh, I don't want to say to keep pace, but to avoid you know losing ground. Right now, FSU has a chance to you land. Can't a top just see South class. Florida. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's absolutely. why I said like let's take a look yeah. at how Joseph and Shannon and those guys are actually doing for you. Circle right? back to the first five minutes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, like you have a chance to put a real foundational class in place this year. And if you can show some improvement on the field next year, the, p- the pitch you've been showing to kids is going to, is going to take place. 
However, Miami was already a better team than you this year. You beat them. They were still a better team 12-game season, right? I don't know how they're going to look next year. They lose some important guys. They return a pretty good quarterback, and you know we'll, we'll see how they do. Uh, but it is important to keep pace here, for sure. And we will see if FSU can do that. So I don't think it's good news for Florida State. We're certainly not going to try to spin it as something else. Uh, but I do think it will draw out a level of commitment that uh, has to be there, quite honestly. I mean, you simply can't count on having one of the three schools just kind of mess about and not really take football seriously in the manner that Miami has for the last 15 years or so. You're going to have to up your level of commitment, and that's not a – you know, that's not breaking news to anybody. Um, ultimately, and I was having this conversation with a you know power broker at Florida State about a week ago, I think the cavalry comes for Florida State eventually. You're turning out a number of high-quality graduates each year, a lot of degrees, a lot of kids care about football. Over time, I think Florida State's going to be okay. They've got to figure out a way to bridge the next 10 to 25 years or something like that. Um and it will be interesting to see what level of commitment they get to try to continue to play this arms race. And that will lead into the next conversation that we have about athletic director. Uh, but look, I think you've got to make some real commitment to recruit in South Florida. I also think you need to realize that uh, you're not going to beat Kirby in South Georgia for a lot of kids, but you need to make South Georgia a recruiting base of yours. If you're going to have that much trouble going into Florida or South Florida and getting elite kids, which I don't think you're going to get shut out, but your hit percentage will be very different with Crystal Ball as head coach down there. Uh, you need to lean on that, you know, Region One uh, swath of you know, kind of Valdosta and everything west, and you know, it's important to sign some of the kids that are on your board uh, from out there and and have that be a little bit of a place that you can lean on a little bit more heavily than you have in the past because it's going to be tough. Anything south of uh, Palm Beach uh, County, in my opinion. Yeah, t- tough but not impossible. I mean, you, you you really can't see that area. You've had a lot of really great players come out of that area, and we have to see who, who Mario hires, right? Like I, I do have a belief that he'll he'll hire a staff that will recruit South Florida well, just because if they're going to give them that amount of money. If you're talking about dudes, you know, dropping millions or billions, and, and apparently they're uh, they're getting money uh, from the U Health, which really killed it during COVID. Uh, so, you know, obviously, like they. <laughs> College football, baby. Uh, yeah, we're taking, it, it, we're taking, uh, you know, I mean, pandemic LSU profits money and pumping it into college football. Hospital. Yeah, I mean, if if they can do that, um, yeah, um, you, you can't just seed it. That, that has to be a continuing area of focus. You have to always evaluate who's doing what for you down there and how well they're doing it for you, um, and see if you can continue to improve the staff to do well down there. Uh, if you don't, well. You, you guys know how this goes. Cristobal also said, like, hey, it's going to take time to get this thing back up to where y'all want it. I think he knows that they're not going to have immediate traction with every single kid down there. You know, is Kevin Coleman all of a sudden going to go to Miami because Mario Cristobal is now at Miami that, rather than Oregon? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it wouldn't shock me if he takes a visit down there. Uh, however, you've had a pretty long relationship with that kid, have established uh, – the need that you have for him there. And like, you also lost your offensive coordinator. If, if you're, if you're Cristobal to Akron, and I don't know what other staff is going to come with him, you know, to Miami. So we'll just have to see. Uh, I'm not going to like lie to you guys and be like, Oh, he's going to fail down there because he was 62 and 60. Right. That's, I, I think that's kind of lazy analysis. He'll, he'll, he'll get the, uh, he'll get the building blocks. If you lose that kid to Miami though, that, that, that's definitely kind of a sign for you, right? Nigel Lee Kelly is another one. Obviously, he's on record, I believe he told Andrew Ivins uh, that uh, if Oregon was closer, he would already probably be there. Well, Oregon's not closer, but the guy who was recruiting him to Oregon, or one of them at least, uh, is now a lot closer. However, uh, I also don't think that is over. I, I know that Mike Morvell is personally handling that recruitment and has done a really good job in that one. FSU just had an absolute ton of success at the defensive end position, and we'll see, right? Um, are you able to get his commitment if he decides to sign early? Or 
is he even early enrollee? I don't know. Like he, he if if he stretches if if that thing goes to February fifth or you know the first Wednesday in February, isn't it crazy how like you used to know the exact date, and now we're so focused on the early signing period that I just I blanked on what actual numerical day it is in February <laughs> this year. So I had, I had to default to a first Wednesday in February. Um, well, that's yeah, that's the old. Uh... You know, the old traditional day that we all used to sit and, and wait for. Um, yeah, man, you know, it's uh, it, good for Miami. They did a lot of things that I didn't think they'd have the level of commitment to do. I don't personally think there's a snowball's chance in hell that they're getting a stadium built in Coral Gables. Uh, no, maybe that I me wrong on that again. About. I have somebody Lo- down there who's been a nah. good source for me for a long time, and he's like, that booster is very enthusiastic. Everybody down here thinks he is crazy and that there's not actually room to put a 2000 seat stadium. Oh, also, you'd have to knock down a high school. You'd have to knock down a high, high school, school and try to try to nimby a lot of wealthy people with Range Rovers in their park, you know, with their driveways and build a, you know. You think not in my backyard is a is a fun thing to go through. I I just I don't see that happening. Uh but, you know, they've done other things that I didn't see about a month ago either. So, we'll see. We'll see. I think speaking the, of which, but nobody's standing up there saying you can't give money to the school. That's the key. It's like Miami's never really spent before. There's nobody saying you're not allowed to give money to the school. Somebody could very much stand up and say, you're not building this, this in my backyard. I'm an Ohio state fan and you're not doing this. Mm-hmm. Right. Like and the next guy says, yeah, I'm an FSU fan. I'm a Florida fan or more like, I'm just a fan of not having an enormous stadium right in my backyard. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of being rich and not wanting a stadium in my backyard. That, that's what, yeah. That fandom is gonna gonna fall off of um, December 9th, bud. I'm not trying to make anybody you know panic or anything else, but keep an eye out for uh, the continued blueprint blueprint project that's tied to the 2021 million uh, that Doe Campbell Stadium is supposed to be getting. They've had you know some local pushback there. I certainly get the gist of what people are saying, but like as a point of reference. Uh, the SEC championship game, and I realize that's not, you know, completely reflective of a big weekend in Tallahassee, but it's estimated that the SEC championship game brings about $100 million into Atlanta. Uh, just, again, as a point of reference for what some of these big football weekends can mean for local economies. Uh, I can see the argument that locals don't want to be, you know, paying a college football arms race, but really a lot of that stuff's tied to code. It's really about the ability to even host big time events there. Uh, I think that does ultimately get passed, but uh, keep an eye out for a meeting on the 9th uh, to continue to see what some of the local reaction is to uh, to that tax case moving forward. I, I totally agree on that. Um, you've been a little more plugged in that than I have. I, I do think they get it done, though, personally. But I, I guess nothing's guaranteed. Um, some people in the chat want to know, can, can Miami extend its IPF? That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they can now. Um, they have a 100-yard commitment, it seems like. We also don't know, like, how long will this commitment last. I tend to think because they are, like, buddies of, of Mario from high school who happen to be billionaires now, uh, that the, the commitment will last. Like, I think they'll give him quite a long leash. But there's no guarantee that that commitment lasts forever. The, the U-Health thing, potentially, but it's also that's one president of the school who may or may not be there forever. There's a lot of unknowns. Um, I do think that if Miami gets more, quote-unquote, right, it does help the ACC quite a bit, which ultimately will help you. Like, the big sword hanging over everybody's heads here in the conference is the issue of the TV contract, which you don't have any leverage to really change right now at all, and you're locked in. You don't have a good product Clemson's carrying the league. Miami doesn't. Miami hasn't done a damn thing in 20 years. You know, nobody else really has done anything. A lot of these schools pick bad times to kind of fall apart a little bit, and you're not going to get out of this contract. And it runs to 2035. And there's a chance that, I mean, it, I think Pete, I think Pete Dammel was writing about this, that like on an annual basis, the SEC teams could be pulling in 4x what you make uh, from TV revenue. You know, that's. That is basically an anti-competitive state you will enter if you don't fix that thing. You need to uh, have other schools in the league step up. So while 
FSU fans are not going to uh, – they're not going to be happy that Miami is potentially improving. The whole league does need to get better here if you want to survive. It's kind of like otherwise, you know, you, you can – well, I'm trying to think of a thing I could say here that's not inflammatory. You know, uh, Magic Mike says, yeah, but the ta- – <laughs> but the tax saver sales <laughs> – Tech. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's true. That's true. They did uh, recently get picked up by Comcast, and maybe we will see something different than you know, Tax Shaver and uh, Gotham frying pans and all the other, all the other horse crap that uh, that we've had to sit through on that of the uh, ACC network. You want to talk about another uh, positive recruiting thing here? Please. I'm trying to read the tea leaves on Bama's class, you know. Um, I, right now they have spots for everybody and that would include Earl Little and Kendrick Law but what happens with Damani Jackson the, the five star corner out there at modern day just because Lincoln Riley goes to LA now does that mean he stays and goes to LA and there's a point for this like don't turn this off if you're an FSU fan and all of a sudden I'm talking Bama UFC recruiting I'm, I'm going to tie this together I think it's one of the parts of the show that makes it maybe fun because it, it's all connected. What happens to Elias Ricks, right? Bama was considered to be a, a strong spot for the for the five star who transferred out, out of LSU. If you're an FSU fan, you want to see Ricks and Jackson go to Bama. That is the path that causes them to say, probably not both, but one of, hey Kendrick, hey Earl, we maybe don't have a spot this time, right? That's what you need. You need to position yourself to be second in those races to Bama and, uh, you know, or, or Denver Harris, right? Uh, if all three of those guys go to Bama, maybe you could, maybe, maybe, I'm saying maybe here, not guarantee it. Maybe you could pull a Kendrick Law or an Earl Little, Earl Little Jr., you know? You're a 5 and 17. You're not going to beat out Bama for a kid Bama wants. That's just the reality of it. You've had a losing record for four years in a row. They've had more NFL first round draft picks than losses under Saban. That's just kind of how this argument goes. You have to be smart enough to figure out when they might be out of spots. And FSU, for their part this year, they have not done a lot of finishing second on kids that they really thought they were getting. You know, with Pritchett, Atkins had backup plans. They're not as good as Pritchett, but that, that there's a reason you're backup plan, but he had them. Uh, and you start 0 4, losses have consequences. I do think they're still still pretty seriously in it with Earl Little, and I think they're pretty seriously in it with Kendrick Law as well. They have a good relationship there. So um, there's still a lot of potential to add good kids to this class. We just have to see how it how it, you know shakes out. Betting against Nick Saban, though, is not traditionally a great way to make money. <laughs> no, no. As a few of my friends in Athens found out this weekend. Um, but, I did, too. You know, win some, you lose some. I will tell you a great way to traditionally make money and, and uh, save money, and that is to partner with our friend Matt Lewis at Congruity. There is no better way to find out what your business optimized looks like. Congruity has been great partners for us, great partners for our uh, longtime friends and, and sponsors over there at Madison Social and For the Table. And, uh, you know, it is, uh, like we say frequently, no better way to invest 10 minutes. Uh, worst case scenario, you talk about Florida State for five minutes and you realize that, you know, you and Matt slash congruity aren't necessarily a perfect fit. But uh, we're confident if you give Matt and his team a chance, you will see the same value in them uh, that we have and, and many of our listeners have as well. You can reach Matt 844-247-4100 or reach him via email at Knowles at congruityhr.com. Well said. Let's go uh, go a little athletic director chatter. I, I know we both did a lot of independent uh, research on this, and we have different opinions. So this should be a good segment because we have not had – both been pretty busy. We've not had a whole lot of time to swap notes here. Vince Tyree? We have not, and I've literally been texting <laughs> throughout the show trying to get more information about this. So, um. <clears throat> Okay, so here's what we know absolutely. Like it, the second that David Coburn made that announcement, uh, I can tell you that it appeared as though Florida State's interest was only but one guy, uh, and that was 
uh, Vince Tyree of Louisville. I mean, that was that was the name that I think you and I heard the night after uh, Coburn made that announcement. I think that was one of the Dallas interviews that it, that it yeah. happened right then. Yeah. Okay. Whereas maybe last night this looked like a done deal, and I still ultimately think Tyree will be the guy. Uh, I don't know that it's maybe quite the done deal that it is. There's an interesting contractual standpoint uh, or contractual stipulation uh, that basically bans him from going to another conference team without, uh, you know, without uh, Louisville's, I guess, express consent. Uh, yeah, let's just talk about it, bud. It's an interesting situation. Part of the conversation will be with the assumption uh, that Ty Ray ultimately becomes the guy. And then, you know, part of it probably needs to be exploring if this contractual hiccup uh, plays itself out in a manner that ultimately he doesn't become your AD. Can we talk about this real fast? I, I just want to say something to the listeners and the message board folks and the people on Twitter. Y'all don't know a damn thing about hiring an AD. I work in the sport and I didn't know a damn thing about this guy either. Right. Everybody. It's fun to play like pseudo president or pseudo head coach and be like, here's the staff I'm going to go hire as, and, and here's my linebackers coach. and Here's this guy and that guy, because at least you see those guys on the field. Y'all don't know anything about picking an AD. Let's just sit back and see how this thing goes. Right. I mean, there are some there are some choices that would be very very bad in my opinion. Like, I think Miami was right to tell Tom Jurish to pound sand. You know, after he tried to go around Turnkey, just as Kansas and USF did, or you know, hiring somebody with zero experience, right? Or you know, keeping Coburn long term. Um, look, this guy. I think there's two two separate issues here. Or well, there's a couple separate issues going on here. First is I think that some boosters and other people at the school wanted more input on this process than they had. I think some are annoyed they didn't get that. Miami went through the same thing, by the way. I guarantee you some of those reports that got yeah. put out about what's going to happen were sourced by people who were largely cut out of the process. Dysfunctional, blank yeah. show, all that stuff was coming from trustees who thought that they should play a much larger role than that of which they were allowed. Right. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean this process was good or bad. I I want to talk, though, about what I found out about about, about Tyre from, from a guy who I really trust who works over there in Louisville, right? And basically he told me a couple things. He said, hey, this guy has been a CEO of major companies, uh, you know, was president at Fruit of the Loom, um, you know, million dollar booster, played baseball for Kentucky, but grew up around college athletics. His dad was the first Jersey to be retired by the University of Louisville. Uh, so certainly understands the culture of interacting with big boosters, but also understands the boardroom culture and the culture and requirements of running a large organization. Uh, he told me, bud, if we lose Vince, I'm going to be pissed that our president messed this up for us. Cause that guy's good. And not cause we're buddies, but like he knows what he's doing. Like, okay. That's a good endorsement. Tom George left that place, uh, a mess. And apparently more than I realized behind the scenes. Yeah. He had a lot of, he had a lot of, a lot of little fires he had to go put out. And as far as I know, he did so. Um, my guy gave me some names of people he fired. Uh, one of those names happens to be Tom Jurich's son, who he let go. And that did not play well with, I think, two of the boosters there. Uh, so there's word like, hey, he's not good with boosters. I, I actually think that's probably false. Um, there's a lot of people who do like the guy an awful lot. I've never met him never met his agent or been reached out to him. I, I called somebody up there who I trust. Um, had to make other, other difficult moves as well. Uh, Julianne Waldron. I um, actually don't know what I wrote here. There's another person's name, but when I was, I was trying to type notes to myself while I was on the phone, uh, but apparently was not, not shy of making hard decisions about who needs to go. 
if you guys know, my opinion is that there's probably three or four, maybe five people within the athletic department who I don't think are FSU caliber based on what I've heard from people who have worked at other schools and have come in here and they asked me, how the hell did this person get this job? Right? Like, and I was like, well, they've just been there a long time. FSU is not really well respected by other athletic departments, I think, in part because they're not really seen as a true professional organization. If Vince Tyre can come in here and he's been a million dollar booster himself and has been a CEO and is not afraid to make tough decisions and be a change agent and can work with the boosters, I don't really care if he played at Florida State or not. All this idea of like, hey, let's go get you know, Ernie Sims or Manny Diaz to do this. Stop trying to keep everything in the family. That doesn't make you better for the job just because you played here or coached here. It, it doesn't. It does make you harder to fire if you mess up. You know, we'll see if they renew Dugan's contract and, and, and how that goes. Um, I, I, I got to tell you, like, FSU does a really good job in spite of some of its people, I think. In like they, their coaches, they have some really good coaches in in all in all the sports. Uh, but I'm, I'm not saying this guy's gonna be a home run hire, but he's a sitting athletic director in your league, who has a relationship with you know with with Commissioner Jim Phillips. He's cleaned up messy situations before. This is certainly a messy situation. He knows how to fundraise, which is also really key. Obviously, there's other stuff I don't know. Um, I, one of the things I'd like the most was like, you're gonna have to make some changes when you, when you come to Florida state, right? Uh, no, Caleb, uh, asked in the chat, where, where was he a booster at? I believe he was a booster at Louisville. Yeah. I think so. Um, That's my understanding. Yeah. So, um, there's other questions though, like how this will work if he is the guy again, it's just what, from somebody what I trust up there, I didn't know a damn thing about this guy before. I really think if you're forming an opinion based on what a couple people say on Twitter, it's just not, that's uninformed. You know, like, I, I don't, I don't know. I have to ask. That's why I wasn't well, going to do a podcast as soon as I heard this guy's name. Cause I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, and you just get such a, <clears throat> just such a collective theory gets built up on Twitter so quickly. Like, Oh, he's bad with boosters. Yeah. He's bad with boosters. Maybe two um, who were super tight with Jurich and, and were angry that, that he that he he, he pink slipped Jurich's son. Yeah. Um he, he's an I interesting also, background. Very non traditional as we've talked coaches. about. I, I do know that. He will stand up for his coaches, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um good. There's a rift between he and the president, apparently, over some uh like the manner in which he needed to, 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 to meet out discipline. I think he is somebody who uh, really wants to win. If you guys catch catch what I'm putting down here, you guys picking that up. Um, and at Louisville, there's certain things that are similar to FSU as far as who you can get into school, how things can be done. You know, like FSU is a good academic school, but it's uh, you know, unfortunately, they do make fun of it on The Simpsons, right? From time to time, you can kind of get in whoever the hell you want. I I, I think he has. Uh, I don't know. I was basically the guy was like, look, he's kind of old school in that. Like he does want to win. And I think sometimes his hands have been tied there a little bit from yep. what I understand. Real quickly, some of the other questions have talked about other candidates. Uh, the Jeff Puritan guy, if I'm pronouncing that name correctly, um, the guy who worked at Tallahassee in the late 90s, early 2000s. I don't think he was ever a real serious candidate no. from the people that I talked to. Interesting in that if you talk to 10 people, five of them think that guy would be a home run hire, and five of them are like, nope, I wouldn't hire him at athletic director ever. It's just interesting, the split opinion that some have on him. Um, Alford, obviously, very popular with some people. Um, I hope that Alford can stay. I don't necessarily expect him to if he's not athletic director. Uh, that would mean that Florida State needs to make a very important hire uh, for the boosters. Alford, they could go internal there for sure. Like there's could. some good people that he's hired who you could promote. He's got um, some. There's some good people in the boosters. Absolutely. Um, I don't want to say I feel for Alford because he's being paid and this is a big boy business and people 
travel, you know, people are hired guns and do the best at the, the places that they go. But that guy made a commitment to this program at a time that it desperately needed somebody like him. He came in, he did a very, very good job, and all the while with the intention of trying to be athletic director. Okay, didn't work out. We'll have to see if he, you know, takes his talents elsewhere. I expect Obviously, he Mike's will. staff was very, like, like, I think we can say that, right? Like, Norvell's people. Oh, those two work very well together. I mean, there's, corner. yeah, there's and reasons Alford that Alford would. Yeah. I'll let you run. No, sorry. Well, I was going to say, like, Alfred has a pretty good feel for the mess that Mike took over. And I think is probably the person most willing to give Mike leeway as far yeah. as. I probably should stop saying Mike's. They're both, you know, Mike. Norvell, the the most, you know, the most runway, right? Uh, I do think, though, that if it is Tyre, that this indicates that the new president wants to uh, wants to make serious changes, not well, on the yeah. coaching staff, but like uh, well, in to how a, things are run. To an extent, I think that was an unfair disadvantage that Alford was was cast in. He was. A candidate that, whether fair or not, was seen as somebody that was already here and a president interviewing guys that all of the other candidate pool told him how broken the situation was. And regardless of whether they hired him or someone else, there was going to have to be drastic change made. Um, it's my opinion that at least Alford's view of himself is that he's not a large enough of a change agent for what the president's looking for right now. Um, so... Uh, that is interesting to me. It is also, you know, this is not, as I've seen elsewhere, some Harvard academic just looking to make a, you know, looking to make a, a higher and then get out of acad- athletics. If, if Ty Ray is ultimately your decision, you know, that's a, a, a fairly aggressive move for somebody like that to make. So it's interesting to follow. Uh, you know, my expectation is still that he's your athletic director, but Maybe not the slam dunk that it appeared 24 hours ago. So, I I agree with that um, 100%. Let me see. Some other questions here we probably want to no. dip into I don't show. mean to stop the podcast for one guy, but Alfred 100% wanted the job. But no yes. discussion or debate about that, Zach. It was, he took the booster president job, in my opinion, with the full intention of growing into AD in time. So, uh, no doubt this would be the best AD you've had since Dave Hart, right? And uh, not a moment too soon, man. I mean... And I think we've... really anybody you would have hired, like, well, anybody. not anybody, but, like, wow. I think Alford would have done a good job. Obviously, like, Tyree in the business world is very accomplished. And then, you know, one of the knocks on him, obviously, he's only been an AD for, what, four seasons? Um, Okay, sure. I think that's a valid criticism, right? Uh. One criticism that I heard from some people who I really respect, but I don't think it's apt because of what we talked about earlier with the current ACC deal, was they were like, we need to get somebody who's so forward thinking he can figure out a way to get us out of this league. And I was like, the way you get out of the league is by establishing competence and respect over the next five to seven years to where you can whittle down this contract to where it's like, hey, it's 2031 and you only have four seasons left on the contract. You've done a really good job in a resource deficit against the sec under the yeah. very competent leadership of whomever we'd like to extend an invitation for you to join, you know, the, the super Liga or, or whatever. Right. That's an Italian soccer reference, by the way, if you guys don't know, <laughs> or, or Spanish, one of the two, um, I, I see it on the betting drop down win, uh, window when, when I'm clicking through. What I'm saying here, though, is I don't think that is a relevant, like forward thinking, yes. Getting out of the league, not a realistic component of this hire at this point in time. Come talk to me in a decade or eight years or whatever. Right yeah, now, you I mean, need to look, establish competency. Yeah, you could hire a team of, kids, of guys at King and Spalding or Wilmer Hale or whatever high profile law firm you want to. And you're wasting your time when it comes to the contract right now, in my opinion. Now, maybe there's some, some bright legal minds out there that can find a loophole. Uh, but I don't think you're making this hire at AD with any kind of idea in the back of your mind that he's going to navigate some kind of immediate way out of this conference. It's just the situation that you find yourself in right now. Let me ask you a question here. So there's obviously the issue 
of the clause in his contract. Um, are you under the impression that that is actually going to keep him there? It, obviously, like if they if the board doesn't waive it, sure. Um, but I do think there's an issue here if if the relationship between he and the president is not rosy, and that's what I've been led to believe. Do you think the president or the, the board is going to hold him to it? So one, I would expect that there's uh, a buyout clause of a non-compete, as Caleb uh, mentions in the in the chat. I've also had some attorney friend of mine, and you may be a good person to bounce this off of, seriously question how enforceable that is with uh, without you know some kind of exit plan um, being written into it. And it's uh, right to work states and all types of other things right. have to be examined there, but that's a interesting stipulation in a contract. I think if uh, if Florida State 100 percent decides that Tyra's their next AD, then that will be who it is. Now, maybe if it is some situation where Louisville just wants to play a you know pissing game with you, for lack of better words, just doesn't want to play ball because they don't want to be seen as a uh, you know, somebody that's losing their AD to another conference school, then I guess there's a situation where you could see a president throw his hands up and say, if you guys want to hire Alford or whoever else, then do it. But I, I ultimately, I think this is a bump in the road and something that we, you know, mention in passing five or six years from now as some kind of historical example of a, you know, contractual stipulation that ended up taking two or three more days to get worked out than uh, originally planned. I, yeah, I, I think that's that's certainly certainly possible. Um, if they want to get this done, I think they'll get it done. Bottom line, especially because it's obviously like the relationship is not not great at the current spot. Question for you: Should this have been handled differently, or with more people consulted earlier on? Um, how many boosters and power power players, so to speak, that you talk to feel like? The president kind of or search committee kind of went, you know, rogue, so to speak. And do you feel like if other people had been involved more, this would have gone to uh, to Alford or to uh, what's his name from Georgia? Yeah, I, I think if more people, the more the broader the pool, the more likely Alford would have been your AD. I mean, I think that's a safe reflection to make on this course of action again i'll refer back to how we started this conversation though i don't want to say that offered wasn't considered i think he was given very serious consideration but within 24 hours of this search being made public it was pretty clear to you and i that the full focus was put on uh you know tyra and that was appeared to be the direction that they wanted to go uh, almost immediately so you know this is by all accounts, being driven by the president of the school, to an extent, that's what you want. Uh, you also have to realize when you're the president, if you drive this unilateral decision and it doesn't go well, when you have at least what your booster class will refer to as a layup hire, all but ready-made, and you went in the other direction, uh, you know, it's not going to be necessarily the first uh, and best step to to get off uh, or, you know, as a relationship meeting point with your booster class. So, um, I, to answer your question, the larger the pool involved, the more likely it's offered. Um, but this was a decision that was driven by one man and one man who, um, uh, well, by all accounts, when he made his decision as who he wanted to go to, he was pretty singular and focused in pursuing him. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I, they used to search for him on this, I believe, correct? Um, yeah, I believe that they started looking about two months ago at, at the landscape as to what this looked like. I don't know exact dates, but uh, I do believe they used to search for him. Yeah, I, I agree. More Ernie Sims suggestions in, in the comment section for a linebackers coach. Again, let's expand the pool outside of FSU alumni. When you hire an alum as a coach, it makes it really hard to fire them if they don't work out because there's feelings involved. Um, unless the guy's like, done a really really good job elsewhere i think it's a bad idea to hire alums as coaches unless they're really proven that way there's a lesser chance that they fail 
And then sometimes they just don't get hired. Uh, like Terrell Buckley. He did a great job distinguish himself at other places and just never worked out. So Yeah. Um, how, okay, so one thing I would point out here is that like it's not Ty Ray's call to reach out to prominent boosters before he gets hired. I don't think that the boosters are dumbasses, and they're not going to just write this guy off because he's not Alford or because like they didn't get as much say in the process. Obviously, I'm thinking he's going to have some charming to do, but you're going to have to do any, that at any job. I'm not saying he's an amazing hire. I'm not saying that he is absolutely the right hire. I didn't know what to think. I just called my guy, and he's like, yeah, that's going to really suck to lose him. I actually thought, by the way, because I had a source tip me to Tyra early, but I didn't read the text correctly. My guy said, hey, I think we're going to hire the Louisville guy. And I thought he meant Jurich. And I was mm-hmm. like, uh, what? <laughs> like that was going to be. And Jurich, for those who, of y'all who aren't aware, like 10 years ago was thought of as maybe the best athletic director in the country. Uh, was really highly thought of and had, you know, a certainly a a large and supportive cast uh, at Louisville uh, while during his time. And, you know, he probably got a little, you know, kind of interested himself uh, to an extent, as others did at Louisville during that period of time. But, um, yeah, he, he's certainly a name that's out there, but is uh, a little bit more that of 10 or 15 years ago as far as the flavor of the month. I, I would agree with that. Um, I responded to something in the chat here. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I don't think there's any reason to think he can't get along with him. Um, uh, I do think now is kind of the time to, uh, it's a good thing that they're bringing the boosters more under the wing of the athletic department and modernizing it. The FSU booster structure was incredibly convoluted and kind of a, an albatross in the sport of college football, right. Um, uh, for a long time with, with the totally separate structure. So I think that's a good thing. I don't know where this goes. If is there a, a, a date at which you feel like if it drags on past a certain time, it, it will not be Tyre? And if so, is there anybody you think still could get this? If if this goes, if you get out of the weekend without it being Tyre uh, or Tyre, then I would start to have real concern. Like if we enter next week without an athletic director, I would expect that you would potentially see uh, a focus shift. So, I mean, maybe that, maybe that's a short schedule. I don't know. Uh, We'll just have to see. Maybe I'm being overreactive to what appeared to be all but done as of yesterday. Um, So we'll see. A lot of that's dependent upon Louisville and those and how they want to you know, pursue this situation or whether or not they want to present an active buyout or, or what plays out. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I don't know of a whole lot of other candidates involved in this. I mean, I, I think there, the gentleman you referenced from Georgia is one that uh, is, is one that's out there that I don't think I've seen a whole lot of other places. He would get another look. Alford would get another look. That's what I think would happen if, for whatever reason, this were to fall through. That makes sense. What else do we need to uh, to touch on here? Um, my notes, what does FSU really need out of this hire? Competence, professionalism, someone not afraid to clean house, bring in some new blood, understand the NIL space, which that is something that he's been trying to push for there at Louisville. Um Obviously, if you saw the Texas news today, uh, Texas boosters are guaranteeing $50,000 per year to every scholarship offensive lineman. Uh, Now, granted, that's Texas. They like to do stuff like that. It's a little bit over the top. But there's a lot of this going on in the sport now, and it's pretty rapidly become a a recruiting tool. And you're going to need somebody who can kind of rally the troops together. 
FSU has a plenty big fan base to be competitive. Not Texas competitive necessarily, right? But uh, FSU has never had the most money in the sport. It just needs to not, you know, sit still, and it'll be fine. You just need to keep working on things and make sure you have competent leadership. And you know, from Spetman to you know, Wilcox, Coburn was brought in for kind of with like a very limited purpose, you know, uh, and I think accomplished most of that purpose. You kind of had some issues there for a while at AD, and ha- having a, a, a good leader at AD, whether it's Tyree or not, makes a lot of sense. I, I think Florida State's made a little bit of progress on the NIL front with you know some singular one-offs uh, with some kids. I do think that if Florida State's going to be successful on the NIL front, they're going to have to mobilize like the retail donor. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're going to have to get. A whole lot of people give fifteen dollars a month or something like that. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what that, uh, have like how this blossoms and how it presents itself. Uh, I do think Florida State has some, you know, some relatively well healed people who are willing to do what's necessary to uh, support the football program. But ultimately, if NIL is going to work for Florida State, they're going to have to pair very wealthy individuals who want to, you know, sponsor a player or two in the recruiting class and also mobilize what is a very, very large fan base. And, you know, look, politicians have proven that you can do some pretty interesting things based off nothing, but what, again, people would qualify as retail donors, small micro transactions. Florida state's got to do that. And they've got to do that successfully. Agree there on that. You want to talk a little transfer portal here? Um, a couple people in the chat asking about transfer portal. I do have a couple of things. Uh, number one, FSU did officially offer uh, Jared Verse. He is the defensive end out of Albany. Uh, had a big time year this year. Very productive. That's a position where, again, you, you had a whole lot of success, right? Um, with the transfer defensive ends the past year, it was probably the best unit on your team, you know? And uh, yeah, they like the kid quite a bit. And Iowa offered as well. Who else offered here? Um, Iowa offered. Tennessee offered uh, just today, actually. Syracuse offered yesterday. Nebraska, Cincinnati, West Virginia, Houston, Utah, San Diego State, Purdue, uh, Kent State, Colorado, kind of on and on and on, right? So in the last 72 hours, the kid has picked up a whole lot of offers. It's very clear. Uh, that everybody seems to think he is a, a high, you know, high caliber uh, power five player. So if they can get Jared Verse out of the University of Albany, probably somebody they'd be wanting to take. As far as guys jumping into the portal, no, uh, you need to lose what eighteen or nineteen more if you want to take a full thirty-two. Somebody did ask, hey, like, can FSU? Basically, cut a kid off the 85, but keep him on the uh, uh, keep him on scholarship at the school. And the answer to that is no, unless you put him on a medical hardship, which means he has to like agree that he's not going to play football anymore because of some medical thing. And you got to get your doctor to, uh, you know, um, doctor to sign off on that. Uh, do you think Shannon will be the co-DC? I I hope not. I mean, I, I again, not impressed with what he did defensively at Florida or UCF. I know some of the linebackers on this team like him. Seems to work well with Fuller, so those are our points in his favor. Uh, but, I mean, if you're trying to be competitive here, is that really what you need to be doing, or do you need to be going out and getting a big-time guy? Or are you just trying to just tread water? Right. Yeah. And where else you want to go with this man? We certainly got some uh, flyer. Yeah. What do we got? Listener questions that we could address uh, on a future episode. We've got a couple that we can really. We've kind of organically hit on uh, almost everything that I see here. But um, let me see here. Uh, kind of, well, yeah, you just referenced that one. Um, 
<laughs> with the recent fire sale of coaches at Clemson, do you think Nick Saban is getting ready to retire within the next one to two years? And do you think that makes things more likely that Dabo would give that position real consideration? Do I think Dabo would get – where is this in, in, in the doc? I'm sorry, I was trying to read it. Which okay, you highlight. Do I think I have no idea who's Bama's gonna hire. Um it does strike me as kind of weird that Saban in his press conferences lately has not been all about the process and instead has been just very like celebrating the result in a way that he normally doesn't do you know what i mean mm -hmm. like he doesn't he didn't he's not talking about like, there's so many things we need to do better and stuff he's just kind of like i guess the word is enjoying the ride there's a very like jimbo 2014 second half of the season element to, to his press conferences now and especially mm -hmm. his post-game interviews i don't know man like the guy might coach until he's 100 it also wouldn't shock me if next year's is next year after bryce young goes pro Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Um, do I think do I have any comments on Billy Napier saying that he's not going to care about a recruit's number of stars? I think that was more specifically in relation to the first class. Obviously, the data shows that your first class is not uh, is not going to work out too well for you. The attrition rates are through the roof. You only have a couple weeks to put them together and. Again, many times the relationships you establish uh, are uh, are not going to work out very well. Uh, is Clemson in trouble? Just reading some stuff from the chat here. No, I don't think Clemson's in trouble. I'll be interested to see who Dabo goes and brings in. I think that they need to change what they do with the transfer portal. Or maybe not. Maybe don't change that, right? Just leave it exactly uh, as is and don't ever take any transfers. I don't think they're going to miss on Devon Mortimer personally. Uh, he took a visit to West Virginia. Look, I think the staff knew about that and was cool with it. Um, That's a place you can let a kid visit without having a whole lot of concern. Uh, Travis yeah. Trickett's a good recruiter there. You know, like a, a if you lose Devon Mortimer at West Virginia, you, you got much bigger problems than than, than I realize. And yeah. you guys know me; like I'm fairly critical anyway. I'll be putting together my resume for the wide receiver coach uh, as well. Yeah, if you lose that, well, they may be taking resumes for that. We'll we'll, we'll see what happens here. Um, is Lane and uh, Ole Miss just waiting on a big program? As far as I know, the buyout didn't change there, so that program could be Oregon. Yeah. So Sam had a question I wanted to touch on real quickly. He says, am I missing something with all the media hype on Dan Radakovich and his move to Miami? Seems the major argument is a great hire is that he was Clemson's AD during the best run in program history, but he arrived after Dabo was already starting to get things rolling. Also, there's no pressure at Clemson to have a successful program in any other sport from that fan base. Going back to his tenure at Georgia Tech, he hired Paul Johnson. Opinions are mixed if that was a good or bad move. And he gave Paul Hewitt an absurd contract extension that hurt the basketball program for, sev for several years. Now, <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned previously, I think Radakovich is one of the best ADs in the country. Uh, I you know, somewhat knew he and his family when he was at Georgia Tech. Uh, the guy, very focused, very driven, wants to win, and uh, has done a good job at doing that. He did not give Paul Q at that contract. That was a previous athletic director by the name of Dave Brain, I believe, or Dave Brian. Brain, I believe is how it's pronounced. Um, he had to clean that mess up. And he also had to hire Paul Johnson during a time in which they weren't paying a basketball coach. At the time, I think the second highest paid coach in the country, Paul Hewitt was, or up there, top five, and Chan Gailey. And he hired Paul Johnson. He had to get the hire right, and he did. I mean, for Georgia Tech, the Paul Johnson era is the halcyon days of recent memory. I mean, you got to go back to 1990, and then you got to go way, way back uh, before you find a team that wins, you know, nine or ten games every five years. That's pretty damn good hire, all things considered. So, um, I think Radakovich, in a, in in many ways, the Radakovich hire is more significant to me than. Um, than getting Cristobal. And I think getting Cristobal down there is a 
massive move for them. So uh, that's a that's a significant statement of intent. I, I I agree. It is also. I mean, he's he's an alum, not like like he's an alum of the business school, but he has a chance to make three hires down there. That's a pretty yeah. cool opportunity. Like you're not going to make a new football hire at Clemson, probably, right? Um, you you get to make a football hire, you get to make uh, basketball hire most likely because Larinaga is like crazy old, and uh, and you get to make 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 a, a baseball hire potentially. We'll see on that though. Uh, he brought the triple option to Atlanta. Tech hasn't been good since. Discree Tech was Tech went to, Tech went to the Orange Bowl and and beat the heck out of it like and, and won that Orange Bowl. Uh, Keith Gordon in the chat wants to know like can you use NIL to avoid the eighty five man limit? Uh, no, not really. It has to be an extremely fringe case, right? So the thing is, you can't have a walk on if you brought them on visits and like sent them like official offers and things like that. And it, you would know it, it's just, this is kind of the same question. Like, why couldn't you just have a booster pay somebody's like pre NIL? Why couldn't you just bag man a guy and just have him say he's a walk on people know, like you can see it in the database who's contacting somebody who's bringing them on official visits there's going to be red flags that go up if it's like, wait a second, Florida mm -hmm. State, very weird. How you managed to sign this kid with no visits to campus when he had 17 other, you know, Power Five scholarship offers? That is kind of funky, right? Uh, it's just kind of one of those, like in theory, things, sure, but in practice, um, unlikely to happen. I would say. Let me look here at some other stuff. What else do we got? Overtime say, for I, the uh, women's soccer team as they oh no continue More to pursue a national championship. Uh, as I said, I've had an eye on it throughout the course of the podcast and uh, has not been all that distracting, I have to say. Uh, we need to like have this thing not go to penalty kicks. <laughs> Very true. How do Very I watch true. As the more talented team, you do not want to go to penalty kicks. Do I watch it on... Uh, is it on TV? Yeah, it's on... The it's only like broadcast TV. Oh, shoot. I'm going to switch over. Okay. Nice. I figured it'd be like on a stream somewhere. Um, I realized, so I have a Roku TV in my office. And for whatever reason, my pin for my Roku, I don't know it. So like <laughs> we have, we have some live streaming channels for CBS where I work and I can only watch them on one of my computer screens here because yeah. I can't Sorry. add the app to my Roku. And I don't know what email I use to set up this Roku, so I can't reset my pin. Um, Very much the problem that I find myself in uh, all the time. Yeah, and I, I exactly. Um, so it's on ESPNU. Yeah, it I'll is. hang out for a little bit longer and watch uh, watch this with you. I'll take a couple more questions. Uh, potential positions on the coaching staff you would upgrade. Uh, tight ends coach, receivers coach, linebackers coach, defense coordinator. Fair. And a very similar response from this end. But I actually think you've kind of hit home runs or semi-home runs at the other ones you made. Like, I'm pretty impressed with this staff overall. Um, uh, Kenyatta Walker, very, very good addition. We've mentioned that a couple times, but uh, – yeah, has opportunity a man that wanted an opportunity for twenty years who's taken the most you know taking the best of it and trying to run with it. So uh, congratulations there. Keston wants to know how can we thin out our tight end room? That is a lot of scholarships locked up in that room. Well, uh, Ken McDonald could decide to go pro. I guess I don't. I don't think he's getting drafted, but I've been wrong before on guys. Um, Carter entered the. Portal, didn't he? Oh, right, right. Did hit the portal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gross, I think, uh, will likely uh, be given another, like, one more year to graduate. Uh, okay. So that'll help thin it out some. Um, Douglas, we'll see what happens. You know, you've got two walk on caliber guys who are on scholarship right now. 
So, you know, um, maybe you can find a way to open up something there. Uh, somebody, Ryan wants to know about Cedric Baxter, FSU. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they'll continue to recruit him. He was committed to you at one point. He, he was committed to you on, on the Willie staff. He actually had a much better year at running back uh, than I realized he was going to have. Uh, I did not love his sophomore running back stuff. His junior, junior running back stuff is really, really pretty nice. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. fairly impressed you're your kid in Orlando. Uh, what else do we have? Over or under two and a half new coaches next year. That's a good number. Position coaches under. I would take the under. Yeah. Okay, sure. That's fair. If you include coordinators, maybe over. Um, but I, I still think under is probably the right one. Um, Keith Gordon is still on this this idea. Uh, Keith, I'll, I'll text my, my compliance buddy about this. I guarantee you that that's not allowed. Um, the thing is, like, there's other things that the scholarship kids get that the walk-ons don't. And nobody wants to be like, in that position where it's like, oh, I'm a walk-on, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, can you explain the extra official visit rule if, if a coach is, if a head coach is fired? Schools don't get unlimited do-overs, right? Actually, I believe they do, right? If uh, you, you, like, you can go in home again, you can bring a kid on official visit again if you had a change in, uh, in head coach. Uh, we had a question previously in the pod uh, as to, a name at office or at athletic director that you're surprised didn't get mentioned or to our knowledge, didn't get uh, a look at. I'll say a little surprised. Michael Kelly at uh, USF didn't yeah. get a look with the relationships that that guy has both in Tallahassee and Greensboro. Um, I would have thought that he might have gotten very serious consideration for a job like Florida state. And I think he was a name in the Miami search. Although I, I think they zeroed in on Radakovich pretty quickly. Yeah, I think that's a that's actually a really good one by you. I I don't even have one. I I do by, by the way. I want to say I I don't know if taking somebody from like a super huge successful program with all the resources in the world is the best strategy, right? Because you may have the game plan that those schools run, but if you don't have the ability to uh, uh, to execute it resources wise, it doesn't really do you any good. I think taking somebody who has shown to be successful or at least competent at a somewhat similar program resource wise is likely the better strategy as long as they're they're keeping their eyes up. Uh, Chad wants to know if you had to re-enter crystal balls today for Kelly and Coleman. Where would you put it in for? Uh, Coleman FSU. I, I don't buy the USC stuff, and I don't think he's going to go to Miami. Uh, Kelly FSU as well, actually. Hmm. Okay. But I don't think anybody is over like 20% in that one, and I have I am not at all convinced that thing is anywhere close to being done. Very like, tough commitment might, to read. We might one be talking of, about more difficult Kelly. commitments to read in, of the past couple years. We might be talking about him ten weeks from now. Yeah, I hope I mean, not. No, I mean like like that might be a traditional sign and date. Oh, I, yeah, I, I know, I know. Uh, I, I I hope we don't. That'll be a challenge. And the longer that it goes, if you're Florida State and you want to sign that kid, you need to get him in the early signing period. In my opinion, agreed. Yeah, I, I think that's most likely. Uh, most likely, that is uh, is possible. So, what you're seeing here is about 10% of the entirety of women's soccer on, on TV that I've ever watched. Can I bet on this? <laughs> see if I can bet on this. Uh, <laughs> I, I know of one place that actually hangs like live odds on, uh, um, on like women's college hoops. Mm hmm. So, yeah. Um, Cool. 
All right. Um, do I have a preferred rye whiskey, Tim? I, I really don't. I really just drink uh, scotch, to be honest with you. It's and a little bit of little bit of bourbon, but uh, for the most part, my uh, my poison is is the peaty apple juice, the the peatiest of the apple juice. In fact, this is uh this this is sudden death, right? Uh. You know, I don't know what the women's rules are, actually. Oh, it says, it says next goal wins. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's Where, fun. Where's this being played at? Uh... Santa Clara, California. Got a little marine layer going on there right now, it looks like. Uh, if Gibbs goes to Alabama, do you think Trey Sanders transfers? I really don't know on that one. Oh, here we How go. How much do you think Travis, I take it that Travis J plays at wide receiver next year, Tim? Uh, I think if Travis J is contributing, unfortunately, at this point in time, it's probably – Probably on the offensive side of the ball. So if you're a Florida State fan and you want Jay to be here, do well. I think you, you probably need to hope that he makes the move to offense and that that's a you know an immediate catch. Travis Hunter, um, Trey Walker, I haven't heard anything about with FSU. I think Travis Hunter's more significant contributions in year one come at wide receiver. I think ultimately he is. Uh, a DB, and that's where you promised you'd develop a kid and try to get him drafted in the top 10. Uh, but I think his immediate impact is on special teams and, and uh, explosive uh, plays on the offensive side of the ball. So, By the way, for the guy who asked, we had mentioned Travis Hunter earlier in the podcast. We don't, we don't ever let our Travis Hunter clause uh, get risk, and that's always a, uh, an early mention. I don't think the staff is afraid to make a move on a transfer quarterback, by the way, for Dylan's question. Um, I, I think they really believe he's legitimately improved quite a bit. The only real question I have with Travis, right, and I think it's unlikely you're going to get a player in the portal who's going to be better for you there, is the continued health concerns, right? The inability to stay healthy enough uh, to, to practice consistently. I mean, he – he misses a hell of a lot more days of practice on a percentage basis than he does games. And ultimately, like, that's a concern. I mean, it, if you saw the numbers this year, David Hale made a pretty good case that uh, uh, like they would have gone 0-12 without Jordan Travis. I don't know about that, but it's also kind of hard to think, like, which game they won do you really think they win with, uh, you know, without Jordan? Right, I think they yeah. will take a quarterback, right, because of the health issue, and because I don't know if Duffy's like ready to, to come in and, and, and start for you. In fact, I kind of doubt that he is. But they like Jordan. The issue is just the health. It's also going to be kind of tough to get a stud quarterback transfer to come here to play behind an offensive line that was. Where's the set? I got a bunch of tabs open still today. We're like 99th in sack rate allowed and a receiving core that's somehow worse than the offensive line is. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. There, But there, I do think there's a lot of guys who... What you have to do is you have to find somebody who you think is at worst a solid backup, is at best a starter... But if he doesn't win the job, is not going to be a problem on your team. I mean, like, is there any way you could see Spencer Rattler working out as a backup? Absolutely not. Like, that would you'd be wasting a spot because he would transfer again immediately. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You have to find that kind of fit, uh, which I think they can probably do. You know, uh, you also probably need to make it to where it's not the same class as Duffy. Mm -hmm. Like there, we talked about this, what two episodes ago, the Jack Miller kid 
out of Ohio State. That's a little too close in age, I think. Mm-hmm. So, does uh, does Tarpon Sellers make anything sparkly for signing day celebrations? <laughs> uh, I don't believe they have any sparkling options currently. Uh, I will reach out to uh, to the good gentleman over there and inquire, but I'm pretty sure that uh, everything oh, oh. is sans bubbles at this point. Oh, that's uh, a takedown. That's a takedown. They need to they need to call they need to call or, I don't know card that. They need to call that takedown. Yes, sir. But did you see that? I mean, that was kind of that was a little a little wild. Yeah, she she ain't had. Uh, that they time. do have a fantastic rosé that uh, the uh, the lady friends of mine have uh, spoken very highly of. Uh, Ryan, I don't drink tequila. Uh, I do enjoy vodka during the summer. In my opinion, a vodka soda is the best drink in the world. Uh, I drink either kettle one or uh tito's vodka is something that i happen to think that you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to uh to get a decent quality product on kettle kettle one uh lemon from a freezer straight Mm -hmm. uh we had that i i worked at a restaurant uh, one summer in college and uh just probably not super sanitary definitely recommend this in like in the COVID era uh (laughs) but just ripping it straight from the bottle out of the freezer pretty solid <laughs> that sounds like a job at a restaurant most definitely in college yeah yeah uh, that so. matches with uh with my experience of bartending immediately after college <laughs> double cross or cold river jimbo lands another five star yeah they're doing extremely well with, with uh name image and likeness there Apparently they have 10 million in NIL stuff they haven't even touched yet, according to Yeah, the, yeah. I always, I always had concerns numbers. that when Texas and A&M figure out the NIL game that it will be problems for everybody else. But uh, They're kind of playing I also, a game I, in Texas right now, and they're kind of want, like, they're, it, it's kind of a, a, a bit of a dick-measuring contest. Oh, you know, like, 100%. Oh, you have that much NIL? Watch, right. watch this NIL. Yeah, watch us. We're going to create a charity that pays off into linemen. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> the Pancake Foundation. <laughs> Oh jeez, jeez, yeah, and I, 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 and I've said this for f- three or four months now. I, Alabama has done a ton of stuff on NIL that is just they just don't feel like disclosing. Really, uh, Alabama's yeah. not falling behind anybody. I can promise you that. Well, their quarterback got a million. Yeah, their quarterback got a million, and I'm pretty sure at least every person on the roster is getting like upwards of forty thousand dollars. Oh yeah. It's it's a little bit different game being played. That's why I said earlier, like if you're an AD at one of those schools, is what you're doing does that actually translate to Florida State? You know, can you execute that plan there? You kind of got to play Moneyball. You know, you're you're sort of not the Rays, right? But like, I think the Braves, the Braves. are a very uh, yes, appropriate exactly. comparison yeah. for Florida State. Very appropriate. Can you afford to keep some of your superstars home? Yeah. Do you have to be smart with how you spend and, and not do really silly stuff because it's, it's hard to recover from errors? You know? Yeah. Do I think name, image, and likeness will or should fall under uh, 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 FOIA? Mm. No. I don't really want the government and everybody's business like that. Uh, PIM uh, S one says, uh, "Here's some coupons to whatever kid enjoy." <laughs> uh, are there any bans on recruits attending NIL events for current players, like autograph signings? Do you, do you guys mean like coming in as a fan, or like also getting paid to do autographs? Did oh. Wait, so there's there's second overtime here? There yeah, go. and then it goes to it goes straight to pins, is my belief. Well yeah, it, it definitely would. Nerve wracking. Nerve wracking. How long is this overtime? Uh aren't these are they twenty minute or fifteen minute periods? I actually had to take the game off because I thought it was impacting my uh video quality for a second oh uh they are 10 minute periods 
10 minute and then penalty okay. kicks yeah there's a lot of byu fans there that's a national fan base though it kind of makes sense yeah cool well hope they can win this thing um i'm probably not going to hang for another 10 minutes uh, As we started the podcast with, Bud's, Bud's got a couple things going on in his life. Uh, certainly wish you and Maggie well when that time comes and uh, enjoyed this. You know, we, we may do more some, uh, you know, evening live pods as we, uh, you know, get further out of the out of the season. But this was an awful lot of fun. And I think we topped out at 350 something viewers, which is awesome and really appreciated. So uh, thank you very much, guys. Awesome, y'all. Uh, we'll. Catch y'all on the flip side. All right, y'all. Five stars, Apple Pod, wherever else you feel fit. Uh, very much appreciated. Yes, this will be available in traditional podcast form for those that are asking. Uh, greatly appreciate the, y'all's support. Thank probably you. Probably cut the last 20 or 30 minutes off, I would guess, just so it's not yeah. a 90-minute file. Yeah, true, true. All right, see you guys.